Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Sunday, March 24, 2024. The year is 1922. Our main topic, Irish War of Independence, in Belfast, two men wearing police uniforms broke into a house and murdered a Catholic family in what was believed to be a reprisal for the deaths of two policemen the day before. On March 24, 1922, a tragic event occurred in Belfast, Northern Ireland, during the Irish War of Independence. Two men, believed to be members of the Ulster Special Constabulary, USC, broke into the home of the McMahon family, killing six Catholic civilians, including businessman Owen McMahon and four of his sons. This event was seen as a reprisal for the Irish Republican Army's, IRA, killing of two policemen the day before. The McMahon killings were a horrific example of the sectarian violence that characterized the conflict between Irish nationalists and unionists, and it highlights the tragic consequences of such violence for innocent civilians. Context, the Irish War of Independence was a guerrilla war fought between the Irish Republican Army, IRA, and British forces, including the British Army, the Royal Irish Constabulary, RIC, and its paramilitary forces, the Auxiliaries and USC. The conflict began in 1919 and lasted until 1921, during which time violence and reprisals were common. The McMahon killings were one such example, which took place in the context of a larger struggle for independence and self-determination. Historical significance, the McMahon killings are significant because they highlight the tragic consequences of sectarian violence and the impact it had on innocent civilians during the Irish War of Independence. The event also underscores the complexity of the conflict, which was not just a struggle for independence but also a struggle for religious and cultural identity. The killings were a reminder that the conflict was not just between two armies but also between two communities with deep-seated divisions. In conclusion, the McMahon killings were a tragic event that highlights the devastating impact of sectarian violence and the importance of finding peaceful solutions to conflicts. It is a reminder that even in the midst of war, innocent lives should be protected and respected. Today, the legacy of the Irish War of Independence continues to be felt, and events like the McMahon killings serve as a reminder of the need for continued dialogue and reconciliation between different communities. The year is 1829. On the news, the Parliament of the United Kingdom passes the Roman Catholic Relief Act 1829, allowing Catholics to serve in Parliament. In a historic move, the Parliament of the United Kingdom has passed the Roman Catholic Relief Act of 1829, allowing members of the Catholic faith to serve in Parliament. This significant step towards religious equality comes after a long struggle for Catholic emancipation and marks a major milestone in the country's journey towards greater inclusivity. Context, for centuries, Catholics in the United Kingdom faced significant discrimination and were barred from holding public office, including seats in Parliament. The penal laws, enacted in the 17th and early 18th centuries, imposed severe restrictions on Catholics, limiting their civil and political rights. However, in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, movements for Catholic relief gained momentum, leading to a series of reforms that gradually lifted some of these restrictions. The Roman Catholic Relief Act of 1829, also known as the Catholic Emancipation Act, is the culmination of these efforts. By removing the sacramental tests that barred Catholics from Parliament and higher offices of the judiciary and state, this landmark legislation paves the way for Catholics to participate fully in the political process and contribute to the governance of their country. Historical Significance The passage of the Roman Catholic Relief Act is a significant victory for religious freedom and equality in the United Kingdom. It represents a major step towards the dismantling of the country's long-standing religious hierarchy, which had previously privileged Protestants over Catholics. 
This development is particularly noteworthy given the country's history of religious conflict and the ongoing struggle for religious tolerance and acceptance. The Act also highlights the growing influence of liberal values in British society, as well as the increasing recognition of the importance of religious diversity and inclusion. It sets an important precedent for future progress in this area, paving the way for further reforms that will help to create a more equitable and inclusive society. In conclusion, the Roman Catholic Relief Act of 1829 is a momentous occasion in British history, marking a significant step towards greater religious equality and representation in Parliament. This development is a testament to the power of persistence and the ongoing struggle for a more just and inclusive society. Our selected holiday for today, Christian Feast Day, Hildelitha Barking. Hildelitha Barking is a Christian feast day celebrated on October 24, in honor of an 8th century saint from Anglo-Saxon England, who was of foreign origin. Little is known about her life, but she is believed to have been a nun and possibly a princess, who was revered for her piety and devotion to God. Cultural significance, Hildelitha Barking is significant in the Christian tradition as a symbol of dedication and faith. Her story serves as a reminder of the importance of humility and devotion to a higher power. The holiday is a time for Christians to reflect on their own spiritual journeys and to seek guidance and inspiration from Hildelith's example. Narrative, Hildelith of Barking was a woman of extraordinary faith and devotion. Born in a foreign land, she traveled to Anglo-Saxon England and became a nun, dedicating her life to serving God and spreading his message. Despite her royal lineage, she lived a simple life, humbly serving others and spreading love and kindness wherever she went. Her piety and devotion were an inspiration to all who knew her, and her legacy lives on through the Christian feast day that bears her name. On October 24, Christians gather to honor Hildelitha Barking, remembering her unwavering commitment to her faith and her community. The holiday is a time for reflection, prayer, and service, as believers seek to emulate Hildelith's example and deepen their own spiritual practice. Through her story, Christians are reminded of the importance of humility, devotion, and service to others, and are inspired to live out these values in their own lives. In a world that can sometimes seem divided and turbulent, Hildelitha Barking offers a powerful example of faith and devotion that transcends borders and cultures. Her legacy serves as a reminder that, despite our differences, we are all united in our shared humanity and our desire for a deeper connection with the divine. On this holiday, Christians come together to celebrate Hilda Lith's life and legacy, and to seek guidance and inspiration from her example. On this day, in 1834, William Morris, English textile designer, poet, and author, d. 1896, was born. William Morris was a multifaceted individual, whose impact on the world of art, literature, and social activism is still felt today. As a textile designer, he was instrumental in the revival of traditional British textile arts and methods of production. His passion for beautiful, handcrafted fabrics and wallpapers helped to define the aesthetic of the arts and crafts movement, and his work continues to inspire designers and artists around the world. But Morris's talents didn't stop at textiles. He was also a gifted poet and author, and his literary contributions helped to establish the modern fantasy genre. His works, such as The Well at the World's End and The Wood Beyond the World, are still widely read and admired today. In addition to his artistic pursuits, Morris was a committed socialist activist. He believed in the importance of fair labor practices and the rights of workers, and he worked tirelessly to promote these values. His activism helped to win acceptance of socialism in fin de siècle Great Britain, and his legacy continues to inspire social and political change. Despite his many accomplishments, Morris remained humble and kind throughout his life. He was known for his generosity and his willingness to help others, and his friendship circle included some of the most prominent artists and thinkers of his time. In conclusion, William Morris was a truly remarkable individual, whose contributions to the world of art, literature, and social activism are still felt today. His passion for beauty, justice, and fairness continue to inspire us, and his legacy will be remembered for generations to come. We remember the life of Gertrude Schultz Klink, German politician, born 1902, who died on this date in 1999. Gertrude Schultz Klink was a prominent figure in Nazi Germany, serving as the leader of the National Socialist Women's League, NS Frauenschaft, and playing a significant role in promoting the party's ideology and policies. 
Born in 1902, Schultz Klink joined the Nazi party in 1929 and quickly rose through the ranks, becoming an influential voice in the party's women's organization. During her tenure as leader of the NS Frauenschaft, Schultz Klink was instrumental in shaping the organization's policies and programs, which aimed to promote the role of women in Nazi society. She was a strong advocate for women's rights and believed that women had a crucial role to play in the development of the Third Reich. Under her leadership, the NS Frauenschaft implemented various initiatives aimed at improving the lives of women, including the establishment of women's schools, the promotion of women's employment, and the provision of support for mothers and families. Schultz Klink also played a key role in organizing events and rallies that promoted the Nazi Party's ideology and policies. Despite her significant contributions to the Nazi Party, Schultz Klink's legacy is inevitably tied to the atrocities committed by the regime during World War II. The NS Frauenschaft was complicit in the regime's policies of oppression and genocide, and Schultz Klink's leadership role in the organization raises questions about her culpability in these crimes. In the aftermath of the war, Schultz Klink was arrested and tried for her involvement in the Nazi regime. She was sentenced to 18 years in prison, but was released in 1956 and went on to live a quiet life under the name Maria Stuckabrock. While her legacy is complex and controversial, Schultz Klink's impact on the history of Nazi Germany cannot be denied. In conclusion, Gertrude Schultz Klink was a significant figure in the history of Nazi Germany, whose leadership in the NS Frauenschaft helped shape the party's policies and programs. While her legacy is tainted by the atrocities committed by the regime, her contributions to the role of women in Nazi society cannot be ignored. Her life and legacy serve as a reminder of the complexities of history and the importance of examining the past with nuance and context. This was Today in History, an AIA podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.